everybody, welcome to the final episode of All Ride for 2018. It's been an incredible year for us and we're very grateful for all the support that you've shown, all the shares, all the likes, all the comments. So please uh, don't take the foot off the gas on that front. Keep all of those comments and feedback coming. So we thought 2018 has been a big year, it's been a massive year in the cycling space and we thought that we would round things off with a review of a bike that's really got the trail community and the enduro community talking. Um, it's a bike that has been produced by a brand that is very highly regarded and today we're here to talk all, all about the new EVIL offering. Before we go down that road though, I just want to give a shout out to the Line uh, Components team. Uh, of course, for the last couple of days, they have released this new system called the Holy Rail that really is innovative and is proudly South African. So for more details, head over to linecomponents.com to check it out. In terms of a review, we will definitely get to it at some point, but that will be in the coming weeks. So folks, uh, of course, I'm too tall to ride these test bikes, so we had to get the crew out there. Dale Holmes from Line uh, did the honors, and of course, he railed it out in the trails. We're back in his office now to look at the kinematics and the numbers and all of those good things. And this is our take on the Evil offering. Hey guys, so let's have a look at the Evil offering. The offering sits in the middle of Evil's range between their 160 and 120 mil bike. It's 140 mil rear travel and can be built with either 140 mil or 150 mil fork. So in terms of build, we were lucky enough to test this awesome rig by Trail Tech Cycles. It's a custom build, um, it's not the standard spec, um, but basically it's, it's a pretty high-end build with some pretty trick components. In terms of group set, we have a Box 1 uh, 11 speed group set on a race face next to self crank, coupled with some really high-end trick Industry 9 wheels. In the suspension department, we've got an MRP ribbon up front, set in 150mm, and on the rear we were lucky enough to test this awesome Push Industries coil shock. Um, it's topped off with a 9.8 150mm dropper post. So let's dive into the geometry of this frame. So in terms of reach, it's 462mm with a seat tube angle of 77 degrees. The reach of 462 might seem long for a medium, but it's offset by the steep seat tube angle. The chain stays at a short 432mm with a head angle of 66 degrees. So what do these numbers all mean? Basically, the long top tube is offset by the steep seat tube angle, so the rider essentially is just sitting further forward. It seems like a very long reach dimension, but you don't really notice that with a steep seat tube angle. You might find that your legs are not used to sitting that far forward. I find myself kind of using muscles I hadn't used before. Let's talk about rear suspension. Although the suspension layout looks complex on this bike, it's essentially a linkage-driven single pivot. You'll see the main pivot is positioned pretty high above the chainring. That results in a pretty high anti-squat value. That means it'll pedal really well. The inverse of that is you might notice some pedal feedback when pedaling over rough terrain. The rear suspension uses a pretty progressive leverage ratio, which means you're going to be good for those big hits and also won't compromise on small bump sensitivity. So how do those numbers translate on the trail? The first thing we're going to talk about is the climbing. This bike climbs really well. That's because the anti-squat value is pretty high and the pedaling is really efficient and direct. The steep seat tube angle also puts you in a pretty aggressive pedaling position, so efficiency feels like really good on this frame. On the climbs I found there was a lot of traction. I don't know if this was because of the high anti-squat value coupled with the coil shock, but somehow I couldn't break any traction climbing, which was quite an interesting experience. I found the Push Industries coil shock to be a really good climbing tool. I was able to dial in the low speed compression damping and create a very solid pedaling platform. So let's talk about the fun stuff. It's time to take this bike downhill. The frame itself is super stiff. The big single pivot swing arm makes sure that there's no flex whatsoever when you're actually hammering the bike through rough stuff. So I found this bike was pretty confidence inspiring. Um, it has all sort of the right numbers with modern geometry. It's, the head angle is semi-slack, but not too slack that the bike feels sluggish. So the coil shock was super plush. Um, it has unbelievable small bump sensitivity. You might find on one hand that you'd have to um, get the right spring off the bat. I found it a little bit linear um, on the big hits, um, but that's just a sort of setup thing. So I found the bike corners really well, and that's due to the combination of the head angle chainstay length and BB. I found the head angle of in sort of in the region of 66 degrees perfect for our trails and also for that 140 more category. So let's look at the pros of this bike. I found that the frame was super stiff and that gave a really intuitive ride, especially in the rough stuff. That coupled with the coil shock meant that you had a really plush, smooth, supple suspension feel throughout. So let's talk about what I thought were the cons of the bike. 
There were only two real things. Um, I didn't really get along with the Magura brakes. I just found that the modulation was a little bit too harsh. Um, I think this could have been maybe because of my, my weight being on the lighter side of things. Um, the guys that want real stopping power will love them. Um, I just found them a little bit too harsh and uh, yeah, a little bit too powerful um, for my liking. The other thing was the MRP ribbon fork. Um, again, I think this is due to my lighter weight. Um, I found it was slightly too damped on the high speed compression damping. And within being no adjustment to that, I found it kind of damping the ride all the time, giving me a little bit of a harsh feel. On the flip side of that, the, the ramp control is a real game changer. Um, it, it just allows you to adjust your ramp on the trail. Um, even if you may mistakenly you know, run too low a pressure, you can just ramp up the ramp control and you won't have any of those harsh bottom outs. So although the, the ramp control was great, I just found the damping a little bit too damp for lighter riders. So in summary, I'd say this bike sets out what it was designed to do, which is cover the Trail 29er category. I found that um, it was super confidence inspiring. I found it was capable. I found it kind of fun, enjoyable. I found that um, the push shock was just uh, incredible once you dialed it in and actually resulted in a pretty good climbing platform as well. Um, there were some component specs that actually impressed me, like the Box 1 group set. Uh, I found that that shifts amazingly, like you can just shift through the gears under load and it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any shifting issues or doesn't climb about. Um, the clutch is super stiff so it's quiet on the way down, there's no slapping. Um, the Industry 9 wheels are really stiff and solid, they look super bling with aluminium spokes so that was a, a, a nice thing on the bike, also nice and wide. Um, so yeah, that that. Altogether, the component spec and the frame and the you know sort of modern geometry adds to together to result in a really good kind of fun, playful, capable trail bike. I'd say. Cool. So that's a wrap for the final episode of 2018. We hope that you found our review of the Evil Offering objective, informative, and basically going to give you a better idea of whether this is something you want to jump on or not. If uh, if I had the money to spend right now, I certainly would be considering it. As, uh, as my enduro or trail bike. Unfortunately, the medium a little bit on the small side for me, so uh, the other boys got to have fun on it. But uh, yeah, that's hopefully gonna change in uh, the coming weeks. I've got some pretty exciting news up my sleeve around uh, something arriving mid-January. But folks, if you wanna find out more about uh, the Evil Offering and Trail Tech Cycle specifically here in South Africa, just head on over to their website. You can find the link in our bio. Other than that, there's one thing left to do, folks, and that's enjoy your Christmas, stay safe out there, and uh, yeah, use the brake to get out on your bike as much as humanly possible, paying some real fitness into 2019. If you like what you've seen, give us a like, give us a share, and more importantly, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for the support, folks, and we'll see you in 2018. <laughs> 2019.